I invite you to turn in your Bibles with me this morning to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. And please notice with me verse 21. Matthew chapter 15, beginning with verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Some happy mothers would say, Amen. I know what that's all about. Or just stay with me here. Notice verse 23. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him. You know, what a key verse right there, huh? Well, you can sure plant on that verse for a while. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Wow. Notice verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs, eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. Yes, Lord, we remember our mothers this morning. We recognize that sometimes it seems like when we're preaching around a holiday, we're, we're thinking that we're going to hear a message that we've always heard, that we always hear. And uh, Lord, help us even this morning just to have ears to hear. Whether you are a mother or a father, whether you're married or single, uh, no matter what your state, I can tell you the Holy Spirit has something packaged up and prepared just for you, my friend. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Yes, we, we, will, we will see Christ and we will look at this Canaanite mother, but we also hear the gospel preached. And so help us, Lord. To just pay close attention to you. And Lord, might we say, yes, Lord, we will. And help this preacher to convey exactly what it is you would have him to say. And Lord, may we appreciate and realize that, that yes, while we do celebrate a particular wonderful day, and it truly is, we're thankful that on this day, the Lord's Day, we're here hearing from you. Speak to hearts, Father, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Notice Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. Notice the last part of the verse. Have, how about this? What a, what, a, what a statement this is. Every statement that this woman makes. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Without even looking at my notes and even beginning my message, may I say that anything and everything that the Lord does is an exercise of him having mercy on us? I mean, think about that for just a moment. Have mercy on me, Lord, that I might be able to breathe today. You know, when we get to a place where we understand that, we are going to count blessings like we've never counted them before. You know, if we would get away from this, I can't catch a break attitude and everything's wrong and nothing goes right for me. And we start looking at how every little, every, the very fact that you're sitting here today, the very fact that uh, you're with family, the very fact that, that God is on the throne and in control is an act of mercy. And this mother sees much more than many of us all see who claim to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. I mean, think about that for just a moment. Christ is interested in mothers. Yeah. Somebody say amen to that one. That's yeah. a free amen. Christ is interested in mothers. He came to seek and to save them. 
I said, hey, none of that. And he uses mothers in his ministry of seeking and saving others. Notice Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's the plan. That's God's program. That's the way he works. The New Testament shows us Christ's concern for mothers. It's not hard to pull from the Bible a Mother's Day message. That's just, uh, that's not going to be hard at all. Because anytime you preach the message of Christ, I believe that you, that can be considered a Mother's Day message. How many of us have fond memories of how our mother, whether it be our biological mother or even, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, some special uh, someone impacting our life in a special way? I must say, I still remember the first voice I ever heard read the King James Bible was my mother's voice. And uh, nobody reads it like she does. Nobody. And I'm sure you feel the same way about your mother. But you know, we can learn a lot from this Canaanite mother right here, can't we? Christ and a troubled mother. You know, can I just tell you, you don't want to get in the way of a mother on a mission. How many know that's the plan? Amen. How many have figured that one out? Uh, what, what, is, what do they call Sarah Palin? The uh, grizzly mom or something like that? Hey, I, my mom was a grizzly mom before Sarah Palin ever came along, let me tell you. All five foot two of her, amen? She learned a long time ago, raising five boys, that if you can't get their attention, you pick up the difference if you get their attention, amen? She would figure the height of the difference and pick up a board that was big enough to get our attention. And she did. And she still does, by the way. Some of you actually know that. But the truth is... A troubled mother is someone, let me tell you, who, who you might think you can change her mind, but you're not going to do very much. Few mothers escape being troubled somewhere along the way. It can happen any moment at any time. Every day can be a different day. You can wake up and it can be just another day, seeming like everything's okay, and then an accident takes place. That phone rings and you know right away. Have you ever been around a mother who senses right away that there's something wrong even before words are spoken? Right. Disease. We consider the, the impact of, of sickness and how it has taken too many of our loved ones home too soon. And we see the loving care demonstrated by a mother who is the first nurse, the first caretaker, and often the last. We see dangers of all kinds. I, I must tell you, uh, we can actually get ourselves a little bit worked up when we think about all the things that can go wrong. Amen? I mean, the truth is, when you really start to do that, you're thinking, I'm not letting anybody out of my house ever, ever, ever again. And then something lands on your house and you're all gone. Amen? So, things happen. But I'll tell you, we've been around moms when there's a problem. We've been around moms when things happen. How about uh, a mother dealing with the immaturity of her children? You say, how do you know about that? Because I was a child at one time. And I know my mother had to deal with that. And she's still working on it with me, amen? The presence of evil and destructive influences. Get around a, a, a mother who, like a like a hen who wants to bring her little chicks under her wing and protect her family from influences, get around a mother who senses and sees the presence of evil and destructive influences in this world. Yeah. How about the troubled mother who, who shared uh, her daughter's agony? May I tell you, the only thing that is more painful than any pain that we might endure, of course, is the pain of our own children. Isn't that true? I mean, it really is true. And of course, hey, this goes for all of us, all of our families, all of our loved ones. But I think there's a special, there's a special connection between mothers and their children. That may not be popular and trendy 
and politically correct, but I just believe it's true. I really do. Notice the girl was under the control of demonic powers. How many still believe that we can be dealing with demonic influences today? Right. I can tell you, if you don't think so, you probably don't know where the problem lies in many cases. Talk to any missionary who comes off of the mission field who will tell you some of the things that they've seen. They may not publish some of what they've seen in a prayer letter because some of them might, well, just, I'll tell you, might not even believe it. Especially some of us in the West. But this, this message, this block of scripture not only speaks to a real time, real event that took place at that time, but I believe this speaks a lot to the 21st century culture more than you might think. Right. This mother determined her daughter's problem to be demon possession. And she went to Jesus with faith that he could deliver her daughter. I, I just love that. You know, you don't know, you don't need to know all that you think you need to know to know this. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Likewise, today, Jesus has the power over the demons that would like to destroy our children today. You say, well, preacher, wait a minute. Let's get philosophical for a second. I can't even say that word more than once. But I can tell you this. A lot of what we think is just a cultural issue today when it comes to some of the things that we're seeing, talk to some of our school teachers, talk to our counselor over here, and let them tell you about children who are walking in with cuts all over them and are involved in some of what I believe the most demonic activities a person can be involved in. You know, the biggest mistake that we can make is to take these kinds of things lightly. Right. This mother sure didn't, did she? We see Christ and a trusting mother. You know, this kind of faith demonstrates for me what it means to just have complete confidence in the one who can do something about your problems. And you know, when it comes to your children and you know that the answer is in Christ, you are leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds of, above and beyond where most people are. Notice, this mother had love for her daughter. Man. This kind of love, this kind of love is demonstrated in just the sense of, of urgency and pathos. Her, I, I know we're reading from scripture, but I'm hearing her voice. And I'm hearing a woman who is, who's desperate. Have you ever gotten around somebody who's desperate? Have you ever been around a desperate woman? <laughs> Boy, you guys are so quiet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, when, when somebody is desperate, you better get out of the way or you better have some answers, amen? And if you don't have any answers, you are in the way. The mother believed in miracles. How many would say that is where we need to get back to, right there? The mother believed in miracles, even when circumstances were desperate. May I say that's especially when we need to be believing in miracles. When we're at the end of ourselves, when we no longer can say, I can figure this out, I can fix this thing, we finally look up to the Lord and say, Lord, I just think we need to see a miracle. How about we do this in the first place? Let's just trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's do all of the right things that we're supposed to do, but let's get back to believing in miracles. Amen. This mother believed in the divinity of Christ. She addressed him as son of David. She knew the scripture. She also addressed him as Lord. She knew who she was talking to. There were many uh, who were following along who did not know this much. There were truly many more who didn't even believe any of this. The Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, considered it their high calling to point this man out as a heretic. But this woman knew who Jesus was. This mother had confidence in the, the faithfulness of Jesus' power. Amen. May I say that today, wouldn't it be a good idea for all of us if we get back to old-fashioned faith where we just believe in the power of God? 
I mean, really. Man. And some of us, can, I can tell you, in leadership, need to be the first ones to step up and say, I need to get back to a place where I just trust God and believe God. You know, the next time somebody walks up to you, even if they got saved today and they say, I'm praying for a miracle and you, uh, you know, have this default mechanism that says, yeah, but you don't want to be overconfident that this is going to happen. And, you know, that might not be the case. It might not. Hey, look, let's get back to believing in miracles. Let's get back to believing that God can do big things. Let's get back to seeing God work in our lives again. Let's be desperate. Let's be desperately Seeking the Lord, seeing the Lord work. That's what we see in this mother. This mother had confidence in the generosity of God's love. I got to tell you something. I dare you to try this one. I don't know if it's legal for me to say dare, but I said it anyway. I dare you to try to outlove the Lord. I, I go ahead, give it a shot. Give it a shot. I can tell you. The love of God is beyond comprehension. The peace that passeth all understanding. We're talking about how much the Lord loves us. This mother understood this, didn't she? And you might think with what is said here, it seems unbelievable that she would think that way. We'll talk about that in just a moment. This mother had confidence in the the fairness of Jesus' mind. I mean, quite frankly, if it weren't Jesus who was speaking here, I would think, what? I mean, just about everything that could have been said to run somebody off was said. Right. And she said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here until I receive a blessing. When was the last time we had that attitude towards the Lord? When was the last time we said, I'm fixed. I'm set. I'm just going to do what I'm doing, and it's going to be keeping my eyes on you, Lord. That's right. This mother had confidence in the fairness of Jesus. She knew. It didn't matter what he would say. She knew who he was. Notice, we see Christ in a triumphant mother. You say, why is she triumphant? She's triumphant in her faith. We may not always be able to say that circumstances have allowed for things to go the direction that we would have hoped that they would go. But our triumph is not in the circumstance, it's in our faith, isn't it? It has to be. She overcame the concealment of Christ. Notice Mark chapter 7, verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into the house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. You know, it's this kind of faith that really reveals Christ to everyone else. When people see in you the kind of faith that this mother has, others are able to say, this is who Jesus is. You know, if, if I even believe, I've got to tell you, uh, half as much as what she believes, uh, it's going to be an amazing miracle to, to see what God can do. I'm telling you, people really do see who Jesus is in you. We love that song, don't we? We sing it. We've had missionaries sing the song, I Saw Jesus in You. Well, when somebody sees Jesus in you, they see you trusting Jesus, you going to Jesus, you having confidence in Jesus, you believing Jesus, you making decisions that, that are centered around Jesus. That's how people see Jesus in you. It's not because we walk around looking like a, you know, a, one of these paintings and, and dress funny. I mean, some of us dress funny, but that's not the reason. It's because people see who Jesus is to us. To see Jesus in you, they have to see who Jesus is to you. Right. And who is Jesus to you? Fair enough question, isn't it? Right. Who is Jesus to you? Moms, how important is Jesus to you? Dads, how important do people see 
Jesus in each and every one of us. Christ had retired to a place of privacy. And this woman sought him out in his time of retreat from the crowds. They were even trying to keep him, you know, separated from anybody who might bother him at the time. But you know what? When you are hungry for the Lord, when you're trusting him, when you're seeking him, nobody's going to stop you. Nobody can prevent you. Nobody will hold you back. Not the naysayers. Not even the well-meaning brethren. You ever get around some of the well-meaning brethren? They say you're, you know, getting a little bit over the top with some of this nonsense. I mean, they don't say nonsense. They spiritualize it. Well, you know, I'm just trusting God and I don't have to tell everybody all the time. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? I mean, think about that for just a moment. De-emphasizing your trust in the Lord. That's supposed to make you look more spiritual. You want to know how quickly we came to the conclusion that there was a particular missionary that we did not believe that the Lord was calling us to take on for support. Now, I, when I say something like that, may I just tell you this? <laughs> that's not a that's not a walking attitude that Maranatha Baptist Church has. But I can remember this so clearly. This was many years ago where a missionary actually took it upon, well, this missionary took it upon themselves to, to de-emphasize the power of God. And how does that happen? Well, when you, sell, when you say to some of the crowd around here, that your mother's not saved. I can tell you, in this group, hanging out with some of these people here, you're gonna hear something like this. Well, can we, can I talk to her? How about, how about I call her? Would that be okay, can I call her? I, I'd love to just encourage her, maybe share the gospel with her. And the response is, from a missionary, no, no, no. Uh, that would just make her mad. We're thinking, you don't know the power of God. You don't appreciate what we're really talking about here when we talk yeah. about desperately trusting the Lord. You know, wouldn't you rather make your parent a little bit mad at you than to see them slip into eternity without Christ? I mean, think about that. I think of how over the years there have been times where We've shared the gospel. I can remember this. This happened, and it was when about 10 years ago when we first started doing Operation Go around here. Uh, we had one of our teams talk to somebody, and it was someone who whose family, uh, who has family who, who go to church here. Uh, the people who go to church here sent the team to talk to the, to the family, and it didn't go so well. And we were a little bit nervous about that. But the family here at this church said, hey, look, I would much rather my family hear the gospel than not. This is the attitude of this mother. This is the attitude of a Christian. We just come to a place where we're just going to trust God. We are going to do all that we can do to seek him, to trust him, to look to him, to have confidence in him, and to know that this same Jesus that we read about here today is still in the business of, of, of doing marvelous and amazing things in our lives. Some of us have maybe come to a place where we're just pretty well satisfied with business as usual. When was the last time we just expected a miracle? When was the last time we just believed that God was going to do something beyond our understanding? Larger than we can appreciate. You see, this mother came to Christ without a specific invitation. <laughs> you know what? We're begging and pleading, pleading for people to come to Christ, and you couldn't keep this woman away. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Amen. And that's hearing the word of God, isn't it? Evidently, she had heard about the power of Christ to deliver, uh, and she believed it. 
She believed, Luke chapter 5, verse 17, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. How many people believe that the power of the Lord is present to heal, heal you today? You know, you know, we're not trying to be TV preachers here. <laughs> no, not at all. This is not health, wealth, and prosperity preaching. This is real teaching that says God is still in the healing business. And if we don't believe that, then we're placing our trust and our confidence in us. You know, we can be good little Christians who never believe God can do anything. And we can just lead our little lives and, and think it's all about you know, the choices that we make and how much money we make and, and how we fix this and fix that. I got to tell you something. Every once in a while, we need to just stop ourselves in our tracks and get back to believing God like we used to. Right. I remember with a deacon in California some 20 years ago sitting with a lady who had some major concerns. And I can't even remember what the concerns were, so I'm not even going to make any up. But I can tell you this. I can tell you what me and that deacon were doing while we were there. We were on visitation and we were glad to be there. And, and uh, we were thinking about how can we fix this? How can, how can we help this lady? How can we fix it? And there's nothing wrong with doing our best to try to help somebody. But you know, you know who we forgot about? The Lord. And before we can even get back in our car and get back home, God had already fixed it. Amen? God still works that way. God still can do things that way. God still works that way. Come back to a place where you believe the Lord, where you're seeking the Lord, where you're, where you're desperately looking to Him. And I know, matter of fact, the more people who think you're crazy, the better off you are. Amen? I want people to think of me as some crazy fanatic when it comes to the Lord. Wouldn't that be kind of Refreshing to see again that kind of faith. She overcame her own prejudice and the prejudice of her people as well as the, the prejudice of Jewish people when she boldly came to Jesus Christ right. for help. She broke all the rules. I mean, I can tell you that a lot of rules were broken. You know, May I tell you that when we lose sight of the spirit of the law, for the letter of the law, we need to break some rules also, amen? We need to get back to saying Christ is preeminent, Christ is first, Christ is my priority, and that's just the truth. Hey, I'm all for church uh, government. I'm all for a biblical, uh, well-run church that believes in having a constitution and bylaws, but here's the Here's the most important book right here, my friends. Man. Right here. Right here. Don't walk up to me and say, well, I don't care what the Bible says. It says here in the bylaws. Well, we need to fix the bylaws. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, this woman had faith. This desperate woman demonstrated the kind of faith that we need to exercise today. She overcame the seeming silence and neglect of the Savior. Now, this part is where it gets interesting, I mean, to say the least. You know, some have misunderstood Christ's attitude and words here, I believe. You know, perhaps uh, he was testing and teaching his disciples by his conduct at this time. Or, or maybe, or maybe he could have been testing the faith of this mother before leading her in genuine faith. I'll tell you what I believe he was doing. He was giving her an opportunity to exercise her faith. He was letting these who were around and, and witnessing what was taking place see a woman of faith. Nobody, not even the Savior himself, will in any way dampen her faith. I, I just believe that that's what was taking place. And I believe today the Lord will not, the Lord doesn't have to test you to find out about you. He already knows. Amen? Right. You know, character is, a, is, is exercised this way. We find out who you really are during times of trouble. Right. That's when, that's not when you become somebody else. 
That's when who you is, good English, right? You are. And that's what we see here. And the Lord knows he's going to put you in, in situations where before others, you're going to be able to say, I give all glory and praise to God and I'm trusting him. Even if I have to stand alone, I'd rather stand with the Lord. And finally, notice, this mother came to Christ in faith and trust. She came trusting and was expectant. May I say, we must, we absolutely must have high expectations when it comes to the Lord. And we must believe that he has high expectations when it comes to us. All right. Do you pray expecting? Well, Lord, I just know nothing's going to really happen here, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. I got this little situation, and I need you to fix it, Lord. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to go through the motions here because this is not going to happen, and I'm just going to be this. Just call me Charlie Brown. I mean, whatever you want to do. <laughs> May I tell you that <laughs> I'm having fun with it, but I can tell you I've actually been in some prayer circles like that where I want to get up and walk away. Don't you believe God can do anything anymore? Why pray? I mean, really. Why pray? If you don't pray with expectancy. Maybe that needs to be the first part of the prayer, right? Pray, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, in my unbelief. I believe, Lord, help me in my unbelief. Help me to be expected. Help me to get back to a place where... I pray, trusting and knowing that you're going to do something. Lord, help me now. Maybe that's where we need to go with this. Maybe that's what we see demonstrated in this woman's faith. Trust. Expect the Lord to do something. Hey, you know, and I know, and this is where I think we sometimes as, as pastors and those in leadership make a mistake. We always kind of want to tone that part down. Okay, expect something, but, you know, not something real big. I mean, expect something maybe this big. Not, I mean, not, well, that's too big. And then be glad. Well, there's a lot of truth to all of that, but there's more truth in knowing this. God can do bigger and better than you can even think. Uh, Press down, shaking together. I'm telling you, he packs it on. And we need to get back to preaching that. We need to get back to teaching that. We need to get back to, to encouraging our people to expect big things from God. She came with a great hope that expressed itself in deep humility. Oh my, what humility. Listen, lady, I, uh, I'm, only, I'm only here for the Jews. Lady... Not only are you not a Jew, you're simply a dog. Can anyone say that to any of us that we, in humility, be able to trust the Lord? I mean, what are we learning here? We're learning about real trust in the Lord. She knew. She knew that she was being called upon right then and there to exercise that faith and to show everyone who her Savior was. There was nothing that the Lord could do to talk her out of believing in who he was. And I'm here to say, my friends, there's a whole lot that the Lord is doing today. And we're talking other people out of who he is. Yeah. We're not giving him praise and glory. We're not giving him, we're not exalting him the way that we should. Because you know what? We don't want to be over the top with these things. I mean, we're just good old Baptists. We just need to calm down just a little bit. And there's where the problem lies. She came with a determination that could not be discouraged. I'm telling you. If I began to start to point out so many of you who have demonstrated this type of, of a hard attitude, well, we wouldn't be able to take our mothers to lunch today. And I'm not that crazy. <laughs> 
I'm here to say I've watched this happen over and over and over again. I've watched you exercise this kind of faith. And I'm not just talking about mothers, of course. I'm talking about you who say, I'm just going to trust God no matter what. I know that this is circumstantially looking pretty bad. I know that I don't have any answers. And I know that there's no fix that can come from me. But I'm going to trust God and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to mean it. The more we see this happen, the more excited we are about how we can impact a world that needs to know this Jesus. Not the Jesus that looks the other way and doesn't care, but the Jesus who, who loved us so much that he went to the cross and died for us. I'm telling you, maybe you're here this morning. And you didn't grow up in a home where your mother knew the Lord. Some of us must admit that this can be one of the toughest holidays of the year. Maybe our experience wasn't real good. I can tell you this, you can look back. You can look back and, and, and think on some of those difficult times. But you can also know this, that we have a great God. Right. That he loves you. And he's a friend that's thick and closer than a brother. He will come into your heart. He will save you. And he will save you to the uttermost. And wouldn't it be a wonderful privilege? And some of you could even testify to this. To be able to say, even to a mother who has made more than her share of mistakes, you brought me into this world and gave me life. And the greatest life that I know today is Jesus Christ. Maybe for some of us, maybe we even have, and I don't know in a crowd this size, I'm sure this may be the case, we have a mother who doesn't know Jesus. Oh, we have been impacted in wonderful ways by so much of what she's done, but she, quite frankly, you're not sure that she's even saved today, my friend. May I just say this? It's not too late. Right. It's not too late. As a matter of fact, remember what Brother Jaime, I mean, Brother Mario had the opportunity to see happen not too long ago when he led a lady well into her 80s to the Lord as the mother's uh, Christian daughters sat there weeping and rejoicing over what was taking place. I'm here to say it's never too late. Amen. It's never too late. And if you're here today and you say, you know what? My mother's now stepped into glory. And uh, I miss her so. I, I look at some of some of my pastors will, and friends will, will mention that, you know, their, their mother's been gone for maybe, and some of you even here, your mother's been gone for 25, 35, 40 years even. And you're only 22 years old. I don't know how that happened, but who knows? And you still miss your mother. You're still hurting for your mother. Others of you, we know we have, we in our church family here, we have seen some of our church family lose their loved one, mother and even fathers over these last few years. Uh, that pain is still there. There's no doubt about that. But what about those memories? What about those fond memories? Today is a day of rejoicing. Today is a day to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for motherhood. And thank you for, Lord, reminding us that yes, this Canaanite mother who, who should have known much less than anybody else demonstrates for us the kind of faith that you and I need to have today. Let's all stand.